The first thing that we did was talk about uh, spinning in a hallway as an analogy for keeping your boy friends nice and clean and knowing where they're oriented and where you are. It's one thing to visualize this in your head, that helps, but to physically do it where you're physically referencing something, especially a real hallway with real walls, and it will help. Four cardinal directions in a hallway. If you're standing down the hallway, looking down the hallway, you can draw a circle on the, the left and the right. If you make a quarter turn, you will be facing one wall, and both of your circles will be happening on that one wall. If you make another quarter turn, you will be facing the other way down the hallway. You'll be sitting in reverse for instance. You make another quarter turn, you're facing the other wall. Now your hands are both on that wall, but they're circling the other way. So it's another direction to kind of get used to. And when you make one more quarter turn, you've gone through all four cardinal directions, and you're back to where you, you started. You want to be able to do that in either direction. If my ploy are like train wheels, and I'm on the train, and Trains rolling that way. As long as I keep my planes lined up and I don't stop them or turn them around funny or something, no matter what I do, the trains still roll in that way. Like here's split time, same direction. Here's split time, same direction. Split time, same direction. Here's split time, same direction. Always, the ploy are always rolling the same way, even though I'm changing. The direction that my ploy wheels spin never changes until I want it to. Look, now I'm in the butterfly. This, this is really the cool thing about this whole four cardinal direction thing. It works with everything. Now I'm spinning opposite directions. Any basic sort of spinning that you can do, you can turn through all of these four cardinal directions in eventually lots of different ways. But start with the simple ones and work up from there. One of the other things that we've played with, which I really like to do, is just kind of spin your boy on a, on a plane, and right now I'm kind of lining up at the edge of the mat, and the plane kind of moving around it, but keeping the boy in the same place. More often than not, we're spinning the boy, we're moving the boy around us, not to toss around the boy. And it's good to play with that other thing. There's a moment where when you cross over the wall and flip to the other side, you have to do a little figure eight to flip your boy over the other side, so you don't block yourself. And it doesn't just have to be simple spinning. You can apply this exercise to gain control and awareness in any sort of move, like things. Or maybe I'm constantly doing a two pedal flower. There's no reason to just do it with one. You could, in a, in a number of ways, you can turn around with both boy going. But I, I, as an applied example, we played with buzzsaw and how to slowly and in control turn around the buzzsaw. So we're walking around the buzzsaw trying to keep it in place and so that it can't hit my arm there, I gotta flip the hand I'm turning away from so that it's facing the wall from this new direction. That allows me to keep going a little bit more. Now I'm gonna hit my arm again, so now I have to see how one is out in front, one is behind. I need to switch who's far and who's near. Keep coming around until I can put my boy in and then I can reverse both sides. We're starting with very simple movement, but you can build on it and build on it into all these fountains and other really crazy moves that when someone just tries to learn it as a trick, there's so much going on, it's really overwhelming. But if you learn this as a foundation first, it's just like, oh right, I just do that thing, but I kind of move it around a little bit. It's a much easier step than everything at once. <laughs> then we put our poi down, and the rest of the class is pretty much poi without poi, how the body moves so that your poi can move better. We stood one on either side of our invisible wall, and we did some exercises. The idea is that we're always trying to keep our, our hands kind of lined up on this wall. We're always touching our hands so that we have physical feedback to make sure that we are, in fact, touching that plane and not like way, way up here. And we want to check our four cardinal directions. Start to allow our torso to turn with it. We up the ante a little bit. Started doing it flip time opposites. Then we all find that a friend or like a post or something that's not going to move on you. And we did stuff in the hallway. 
This side, your right hand could be touching that imaginary right wall. And go ahead and put that forward on the right wall. You see how as long as you're touching the wall, the imaginary wall, you're not actually smacking your partner in front of you. Now take your left hand and put it up in the air and snap fast. And put it back behind you without bumping your partner behind you. So as long as it's over there touching the imaginary wall, you're not actually smacking someone in the face or anything like that. Let's go ahead and swim forward, snap high and low, horizontal, high, the right goes forward, down, back, up, forward, down, back, up. Just pay attention to the person in front of you. If the timing shifts, it'll kind of ripple through this line. Just keep time with the person in front of you. Okay, now we're gonna go in reverse. Right hand up, back, down, forward, up, back, down, forward. See how our torsos are all kind of turned towards the china lights, right? This time we're going to scoop our hands up the china lights until we're like holding an imaginary china light looking forward out the window. And we're going to snap and drop down the horizon looking at the exit wall. Come all the way down by the hips and snap. China lights, lantern. Pigeon wall, hips, chain lights, lantern, pigeon wall, hips. Now this time, ready? We're gonna let our arms drop down, scoop it up the exit wall, up to the lantern, back down. Your hands are always staying on the same sides, they're rotating in opposite directions, your torso's twisting back and forth, there's all this stuff going on at the same time. <laughs> too much you can do with poi that doesn't involve it somehow falling into one of those four categories. So if you get, once again, get comfortable with those, these four as basics, everything else kind of grows from there. Then we did footwork. Think in terms of stepping and turning as uh, intertwined. When you, when you make a front side turn, half turn, you've also taken a step. And of course you can step back as well. When we played with that, we played with then combining those, so stepping front side, then stepping back side, our bodies continue to whirl while we move in a relatively straight line. And then I challenge you guys to play with that split time on both arms. What made that all a little less overwhelming is that as we're turning and stepping, it helps to be able to spot where you're going and where you're leaving. And that happens to line up really nicely with where your focus points for your hands are. So instead of thinking about doing all, all, all these different things at once, if you can really just kind of harmonize it into I'm stepping and snapping right there, stepping away from the snapping right there. Then moving around, waving your arms in different directions, and eventually doing flowers while you do that, like a rolling dervish, becomes way easier.